like during prayer, God helped me to realize that we are relying on a lot of things that we think are helping us function, but they're actually really killing us. Maybe old things that used to help us function, and it's now become like old wine, you know what I'm saying, and new new wineskins and so he put this song on my heart to sing i've been praying it over myself and i just want to sing it over you all this morning uh, if you know the song sing along if not just listen and be blessed in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soul I now surrender. You are breaking new ground in the crushing, in the pressing. You are making me right in the soul I now surrender. You are breaking the ground. Just want to sing it one more time. In the crushing, in the pressing. You are making new wine in the soil I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you into your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Say I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, 
in the present, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making me one. In the soil, I now surrender. You are making new ground. So I yield to you and to your care for me. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you would give me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. You are breaking the ground, so make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you would give me, Jesus, bring the wine. Said Jesus, bring the wine out of me. Jesus, bring the wine out of me. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my own flames to carry a new fire today. So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came near with nothing, but all you would give me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Say, Jesus, bring new wine out of me.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook world, my grace and mercy family, God's people, Christ nation, how y'all doing this beautiful morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Minister Bryant Harper from Grace and Mercy Ministries, uh, Senior Pastor Breon Johnson, um, I'm happy, I'm excited to be before you this morning. Um, I thank Joseph for ushering us into worship. Um, his song is relevant uh, to what we're going to be talking about today, uh, to be crushing, to be pressed. Uh, we're going to talk about transformational thinking. And uh, oftentimes, if, we, if, if we've been brought up in church settings and uh, been around church lingo and church cliches, we often hear certain words in the church and we think of religion as opposed to life and transformational thinking. We want to move away from what church has taught us. Oftentimes we hear the word Bible and we hear the word God and we hear the word prayer and we hear the word holy and we hear the word righteousness. And we oftentimes think about religion, but these, these are terms that bring us life and it brings us life in more abundance in order for us to move away from those things. Our thinking must continue to be transformed into the likeness and to the image of God. So transformational thinking is a, is a continual process. It's an intentional, purposeful, ongoing process and an approach to all aspects of life. It is based on personal responsibility, authenticity, and vision. It is God's truth which enables an individual and teams to create generative, generative change, build sustainable success, and perform at an optimum optimum level in any and all circumstances. The pastor yesterday talked about joy on his Facebook Live. Joy in the mix of Corona. Transformation, transforming my mind in the mix of all circumstances and all situations because when I have the mind of Christ, no matter what comes against me, I have the power, I have the ability to speak to a mountain and it must be removed. Oftentimes in the religious setting, we sing the song, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. That's not transform transformational thinking. Transformational thinking is I have the power to speak to this obstacle. I have the power to speak to sickness. I have the power to speak to this disease and it must be removed. Transformational thinking doesn't take the easy way out. It doesn't continue to make excuses, but it embraces the challenge and it overcomes all obstacles. For example, oftentimes when certain subject matters come up, people will say, well, I'm not there yet. And God understands you're not there yet. And God understands you've been hurt. And he's understand you've been through certain things in your life. There's trauma going on in your life. But a transformational thinker who God is, the question he's going to ask is, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made forward, move forward? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to get past this situation and this circumstance? We're talking about transformational thinking. We're talking about renewing our minds to be transformed comes from the Greek word metamorpho, where we get metamorphosis. It means to be transfigured. It means to change into a whole nother form. It means to be transformed into the same image of the consummate excellence that shines in Christ Jesus. It means to reproduce the same image as Jesus. We are of the incorruptible seed of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. Joseph talked about the crushing. When we get trust, that gives us the when we get crushed, that gives us the ability to multiply. As we talk about Genesis 126, God told us when his team got together and they had a heavenly board meeting, and he put this transformational thought inside his team, and he put this transformational thought inside his people. And I said, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to subdue. I want you to have dominion in the earth. I want you to multiply what I put inside of you. In order for that, you're going to have to continue to be crushed. Some things we're trying to pray ourselves, pray our way out of, or to say, God, take this away. And Paul said the same thing three times when he said, Lord, can you take this thorn away from my side? Jesus said it in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, can you take this bitter cup off for of me? But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's transformational thinking. Paul said, 
can you take this thorn out of my side? And Jesus said, no, God said, no, but what I will do, I'll give you the grace that's going to be sufficient for you to move forward in what I've called you to do. So with certain things, we just can't pray away. We're going to have to endure through the process. God said that it pleases him to crush the son because the crushing pushes me in to purpose. So sometimes the pain that we think is using, working against us is working for us because it's going to propel us into a new way of thinking. It's going to move us into a new way of living. It's going to move us into a new way of hearing. It's going to move us into a new way of seeing. It's going to move us into becoming the image that Christ has, God has called us to be, which is that of Christ Jesus. We were not created in the image and the likeness of God to wait to experience all of who he is when we die. We were created to operate in form and function as Christ in the earth. We don't need grace when we go to paradise. We don't need mercy when we go to paradise. We don't need authority when we go to paradise. We don't need power when we go to third. We don't need his word when we get to paradise. All the things that he's put inside of us, we need it now to become like Christ. That's what transformational thinking is. When the Bible says, let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus. What I've put in you, I want you to become like Christ in the earth. I want you to do what Christ did in the earth. I want you to operate in form and function like Christ. I want you to be able to speak the storms and the storms have to cease and desist. I want you to say, let there be light and whatever you say, it has to become what it is because you have the mind of Christ. And when we come into agreement with what God is saying, God is going to honor his word. We're talking about transformational thinking. Number one, we must think like God thinks. Isaiah 55 says, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. As high as the heavens is to the earth is my thoughts to your thoughts and my ways to your ways. So if we're going to experience heaven on earth, our thoughts must become God's thoughts. And when our thoughts become God's thoughts, then our ways become his ways. And when we do the things that are lined up in his will, he is a promise keeper. And he said, whatever you pray for, it shall come to pass. When we have the thoughts and the minds of Christ, we have the ability to declare and decree a thing and it shall be established. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but you will be renewed by the transformation of your mind. We inhabit the earth, but when the Bible talks about the world, he's talking about the systems of the world. Because when Adam sinned, he gave the keys to the enemy. That's why the enemy is called the God of this world. So therefore, God wants to break us away from the systems of what we've been taught, from the systems of the way we've been doing things. I want to break down that, that wall of, of, of what you've been thinking, because those thoughts have been hindering you from moving in what I've called you to do. So we don't want to have earthbound thinking. We want to think from eternity because the day you got saved, that's when you start eternal life. Heaven is a place, but you start living eternal once you come into Christ Jesus on this earth and you start walking out in your eternal destiny and your eternal purpose. So destiny is daily. So that means my mind has to be transformed every single day. As a powerful prefix in what God has given us is called re, R-E prefix that means back to it means over and over and over again so when i'm renewing my mind i'm actually taking my mind back to eternity past so i can move forward to my future so i already had this mind before sin came into the world so this is why we need to renew our minds because we learn tricks of the ways of this world we've learned the, the tricks of the ways of church cliches and, and christian sayings but god wants us to put us in mind to have a heavenly divine kingdom perspective on every single thing that we do. I want to govern your life by transforming your mind. That's why the Bible says that Christ unto us a child is born and the son is given and the government shall be on his shoulders. We must understand that God created all things. God created uh, uh, governments. There's a courtroom in heaven. God does not want any of, his, any of his creation to be oppressed and any oh, just injustice will be dealt with by him. But if we're going to operate in this earth, we must operate from the courtroom of heaven. We must operate from the government of heaven. That's a kingdom perspective on how God does things. The kingdom is God's way of doing things. It's God's way of living life. The Bible says, put our hearts and minds on things above, not on earthly things. For we died, our life is now hidden in Christ 
Jesus. So we don't want to think on the temporal things that are those things are going to pass away. We want to start thinking from an eternal perspective because those things last. We want to start thinking generationally. He told Abraham, as far as you can see, I'll give it to you. We're talking about vision. We're talking about not just thinking about us, but we're thinking about our kids and our kids' kids. The Bible says he who does not leave an inheritance for his kids' kids is less than an unbeliever. We have transformational thinking inside of us. So we want to think far and above and beyond what our natural eyes can see. So we must continue to have our mind renewed and our mind is renewed by the word of God. Amen. So we must understand that there's a crown that is awaiting us, but we don't get that crown when we get to paradise. We get that crown based on our transformational thinking right now and walking out our salvation with fear and trembling, doing what God told us to do, being in line with God wants us to do continuing to transform our mind and our thinking. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So those that come to God must first believe that he is. If you don't believe that God is, then you'll come with beggarly prayers. That's why you have to think like Christ. And one of the things that we have to come to understanding is it does not matter what God says about you. It matters that you believe what God says about you. Your belief system, that's the seat of who you are. When God talks about the heart, he's not talking about your human heart. He's talking about your con subconscious mind. Those thoughts are inside of you. Those belief systems that you inherited before you came to Christ. You're going to have to make a choice. Is my mind going to be transformed to the things of God or I'm going to continue to think like I, like I used to think? As I said before, do I want to be made whole? Proverbs 23 and 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we think in our hearts, not with this human organ, as I said before, as a man thinketh in his heart. If I think I belong to Christ, then I'll start to move in the things of Christ. If I think I have power, then I'll walk in power. If I think I have authority, then I'll walk in authority. Out of the fondness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Many people say, well, you don't know my heart. Yes, I do. I can tell by what you're saying. I can tell by the way you live. I can tell by your actions. So we want to think like God thinks. Many of us say the kingdom is upside down, but actually it's right side up. This world is upside down. So point number two is you must become narrow-minded. Uh-huh, I said that right. Narrow-minded, not in the sense that you're not open to new thoughts, but in the sense that Matthew 7, 13, 14, 13 through 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by that way, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Difficult is the way that leads to life and there are few who find it. So we're talking about the mind of Christ. If God says it, that's the final answer. There is no other way. If we believe that Jesus is the truth and we believe that Jesus is the life and he is the way, then that means my thoughts, I have tunnel vision on the mind of Christ. I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help. I'm not concerned about what's going on around me. I'm not concerned about what's going on to my left. I'm not concerned about what's going on to my right. Two plus two is four. We understand that that's narrow. It's not five. I don't need to dwell on it. I don't need to ponder it. I don't need to vacillate between two opinions. My mind is narrow on the truth and the things of God. Jesus said, I only say what the father tells me to say. And I only do what the father tells me to do. Jesus said, I am about my father's business. So Jesus was narrow-minded in the sense that I'm only concerned about doing the will of the Father. Jesus told his own mother when she told him, told him to go fill up the pots when they was having the wedding and the wine. Jesus said, it's not my time yet, woman. 
So he was focused on God's timing and what God was telling him to do. When he told, when Peter was trying to tell Jesus he didn't have to go to the cross, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling Peter Satan. He was calling the, he was speaking to the influence of Peter's mind because Peter's mind hadn't been transformed to the thinking of Jesus Christ. So in other words, Jesus wasn't concerned about what other people thought. Jesus wasn't concerned about getting Facebook likes. Jesus wasn't concerned about anything but pleasing the Father. So in that aspect, his mind was narrow. His mind was focused on the things of God. His mind was focused on pleasing the Father. And what we got to understand that Jesus is love, but above all else, he loves his word because he cannot fulfill his purpose or he couldn't fulfill his purpose in the earth if he didn't first love the Father. So we got to grow in love with God. Because God says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. There are people who are actually criticizing other people because they don't respond to Corona like they think they should. You need to stop apologizing to people because you walk in faith. You need to stop apologizing to people because your mind has been transformed to the things and the image and the likeness of God. You need to stop apologizing. And, and explaining everything to people and trying to get people to understand what you're doing. The Bible says, I'm already accepted in the beloved. God has chosen me. He has purposed me. He has something for me to do in this earth realm. And when the Bible says the fear of man is a snare. So when you try to people please, you hinder the flow and your thinking being transformed. It says, woe unto you when all men shall like you. When you stand on the truth of God's word, when you walk in the way and the life, people are not going to like it. And you cannot be concerned about what people don't like. You have to continue to have your mind transformed and move into the things of God. When my thinking is narrow, it leads to right thoughts. Right thoughts lead to right words. Right words lead to right relationships. And right relationships lead to right living. Now, when I'm talking about right, I'm talking about righteousness in God and up, upstanding in, in, in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms, I think 84, 11 says, I would not withhold any good thing for those who walk uprightly, for those who walk in the path of righteousness. So therefore, I got to keep my mind sober. That means my mind got to be stable. That means my mind got to be fixated, that God said it. I really don't understand it all. I really don't see things happening the way I think they should. But at the same time, I believe in God. I trust in his word because the same God who brought me out of the last thing is the same God who's going to bring me out of this thing. So I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm going to be vigilant because once I move from the things and the thoughts of God, the enemy comes in like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And the purpose of the enemy is to knock you out of the timing of God. Satan is not necessarily worried about your sin, your drunkenness, uh, your lying, your cheating, whatever the case may be. He wants to knock you out of divine timing and divine alignment with what God said by the power of suggestion. That's what he did to Adam and Eve in the garden. He made a suggestion. So that's why I need to guard my heart with all diligence. I need to guard my thoughts because when God speaks to us, it comes in seed form. So that means I got to protect my seed. It's like a woman who has a baby. You know, I got to protect this because I got life inside of me. So I got to guard against this. So any thoughts that are not like Christ, I can't accept those thoughts because I got to guard against this. That's what it's called a hedge fence of protection. When your grandparents who ever put out a garden, they would put uh, boundaries around the garden to keep predators coming in from eating up what they want to eat, what's going to nourish them, what's going to replenish them. Because the Bible says that soon as the word goes forth, the enemy comes in to steal it. So I got to be diligent in what everything God has told me to say, what God is telling me to do. I cannot move back and forth. I got to stand on this word no matter who says what. We're talking about the power of suggestion, the suggestion that that man is thinking to you, the suggestion that that woman is saying to you to try to move you out of God's divine timing and alignment. When Adam sinned, God came looking for him and said, Adam, where are you? You've lost your place. You are not where I left you. 
So now you're out of the alignment and the timing of God. And we don't have time to waste. We don't have time to keep making the same mistakes over and over and over. It took the children of Israel 40 years for a 10 day journey. And God finally told him, okay, haven't we circled around this mountain long enough? I need you to change your direction. I need you to change the way you think. I need you to change the way you see because the time is short and I don't have time to waste. So it's, in, it's important that you have transformational thinking right now and you do it often and you do it every single day. Every day because your destiny and your purpose is at hand. I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say one of the richest places in the world is the cemetery because man has not walked out his purpose in life. He's left everything inside of him and he took it with him and it was buried. So right now we wanted the Bible says, teach us to number our days. So we need to learn and appreciate this thing called life that God has given us. We need to want our minds to be transformed into the likeness and the image of God because God himself chose you. God himself put himself inside of you to reproduce himself in the earth. That's awesome to me that God who created the universe, who created all things that would think about me and that would think about you to put himself. In. No other deity can lay claim to that, that they put themselves inside of those people. And I want you to reproduce me in the earth because I need God is all sufficient. He doesn't need us, but based on his word, he needs a body to operate in. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All spirits are illegal in the earth realm without a body to operate in. Once again, Joseph talked about crushing. I'm going to need you to cooperate with this crushing process. I'm going to need you to endure hardship as a good soldier because it's going to benefit you. All things work to the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Purpose, your calling. God has designed, I'm sorry. God covered Adam. He covered Eve. And we're covered, but just being covered by the blood doesn't move us in the purpose. It doesn't move us into what the things God has called us to do. And when we are narrow minded and our mind is fixated on the things of God, we walk in the path of righteousness. We walk in the path of holiness. We walk in the path of prosperity. We walk in divine wisdom and divine health and divine wealth and divine wholeness. God wants us to be whole. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered. And our minds have to be transformed into the mind of Christ. It says the devil's attack attacks against our lives would not work if our flesh didn't cooperate. If we truly mortify the deeds of the flesh on a daily basis, Colossians 3 and 5, living the lives that are dead to sin, Romans 6 and 2, as we are commanded to do, we would not respond to demonic suggestions and fleshly temptations. Check this out. Dead men are incapable of responding to anything. Thus, we see the power of a crucified life. Your flesh and my flesh has a destiny, and it's called dirt. And our flesh wants to get as much as it can get because it knows it has a destiny called dirt. It knows its time is up. But life in the flesh is found in the blood. We want to focus on spiritual things. The flesh and the spirit are enemies against one another. So when we operate in the flesh, what we are actually doing is being opposed to what God wants us to do. We're being opposed to the mind and the thoughts of God. So instead of saying, I'm not there yet, instead of saying, I'm not perfect, get on the mind of Christ and understand I need to crucify, crucify my flesh. The Bible says lust when it is conceived bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is full blown, bringeth forth death. So once I said, your flesh has a destiny and it's called dirt. So it wants to accomplish as much as it can to fulfill its lustful desires. So whatever lustful desires you have in your heart that are not like the heart and the mind of God, let's deal with them 
so we can be made whole and so we can move forward to the next thing that God has in mind for us. Some of us are frustrated. Some of us are being delayed because there's some things we refuse to let go. The transformative mind, as I said before, doesn't make excuses. I can no longer blame other people. It's a scripture in the Old Testament says the sins of the fathers are not counted against the sons, and the sons of the fathers are not counted against the son. So in other words, because of Christ's resurrection power, I have nobody to blame. I have to make up in my mind that my mind is going to be made whole. I'm not going to stop what they said about me. Stop me. I'm not going to stop what happened to me. Stop me. I understand it hurt. I understand that you have trauma, but let's go through this process and let's get crushed. Let's go through the pressing. Let's go through the shaking. Let's go through the beating and let's cry if we got to cry. But we have to get through this because purpose is at hand. Destiny at his hand. Redemption is not complete without divine provision. I don't want you to work for this thing. I want you to flow in me. I want you to move in me with great power. A transformational mind allows space for God to enlarge himself inside of us. God says, I want to so favor you where I can put my desires inside of you to empower specific areas where rapid growth can take place in your life. That's what happens when, when we allow God to be enlarged inside of us. I think in the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, Jabez says, Lord, enlarge my territory. Put your hand on me. Make me free. Guard, guide me, direct me, Lord. Enlarge my capacity to receive. Enlarge my capacity for wisdom. Enlarge my capacity for strategy. Enlarge my capacity to receive more of who you are because God is not going to give you what you cannot handle. John chapter 3, verse number 30. It says, God must increase, but I must decrease. John the Baptist is the last of the Old Testament prophet. The Old testament prophet the old way and he was beheaded so in the realm of the spirit god in order for you to put on the mind of christ you have to get rid of your old way of thinking so you can step into the new because two heads on one body is a monster or we could say it is a demon a house divided itself cannot stand so I must put on the mind of Christ in every single aspect of my life if I want to see life in super abundance. I must make choice to decrease so God can increase. So Lord, enlarge yourself inside of me. So when I'm saying that, I'm giving him permission to do so, but I'm also making a statement in my mind that I am decreasing so he can increase. Isaiah 43 says, Remember ye not the former things, but behold, lay hold of it. I am doing a new thing. You got to lay hold of this new thing that God wants to do inside of you. I heard also Dr. Miles Monroe say one of the greatest hindrances to, is to uh, new success is focusing on old success. Okay, you had a victory, celebrate that, but we still got work to do. You still got destiny. You still got purpose. There's other people at stake. There's your kids and your kids' kids at stake. We serve a generational God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're thinking generationally. So we want to lay hold of the new things of God. Philippians chapter 3 says, Paul says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me, and I'm straining forward for what is ahead of me. I press toward the goal of the prize which God had called me heavenwardly, in Christ Jesus. Now, in order for me to press, in order for Paul to press, in order for us to press, what he's saying is I'm, I'm forgetting the old things. That means I'm laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets me. Every weight is not a sin, but every sin is a weight. So you're going to have to decide what's a weight in your life right now. What's stopping you from your mind being transformed into the likeness in the image of God? What thoughts am I having that aren't in line with what God wants me to have? Because what we must understand, if we say we love God, we're talking about a relational God. God doesn't count us as our sins deserve. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He does not keep record of wrongdoing. So when I just can't say that 
I have to embrace that and it has to be alive inside of me. And when I understand that, that he's a loving father, not just in what I say, but what I really believe, I can come to him and tell him specifically how I'm feeling because he's my father. So oftentimes we just see him as God or the man upstairs, but he is my father. He wants communion. He wants relationship. He wants fellowship. This is how my mind gets transformed when I bask in his presence and I bask in his glory. And he begins to download dreams and, and revelation. And then he starts showing me my destiny and my purpose and what he has called me to do. This, 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 we get this from a transformational way of thinking. The purpose in our life is to become like Christ. That's the goal. That's the narrow mindedness we're talking about. There is no other way. There is no other option. There is nothing else to do but to become like him in the earth. It says a transformed mind does not start with separating ourselves from people, places, and things. It starts with daily intentionality of separating the old man, and stepping into the new. So everything we do in Christ must first start from within. It must first start with us. My grandfather told me years ago, nobody can make you mad. Nobody can make you do anything. And what he was doing, he was giving me truth without quoting scripture. Galatians chapter five is, is, is verse 22, 23. It talks about the fruit of the spirit, excuse me. And one of those is self-control. So when I have self-control, that means my mind has been transformed into the thinking of Christ. Christ was always in control. He was always thinking about what the father wanted him to do. He never moved away from that. In his humanness, he had thoughts. But in his divinity, he said, I'm thinking about God and what God wants me to do. I don't have a lot of time to do it. And Christ was on this earth for 33 years. And yet he accomplished everything that God wanted him to do. Why? Because the Bible says there was no gal in him. There was no deceit in him. There was nothing in this world that was inside of him that he wanted. The Bible says that um, he who loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the only three things that the enemy can tempt us with. That's it. So the, 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 the enemy has power, but he doesn't have authority. The Bible says, lest we be taken advantage of, we are not ignorant of his devices. So you keep wondering why that dude keep calling you because you keep letting him call you. You keep wondering why that woman keep calling you and then in your inbox because you keep letting her do it. Your yes has to be yes and your no has to be no. And it's not being mean, it's not not showing love, but as I said last week, it's about kingdom. It's about me walking in my divine assignment and my divine purpose. And as we can see, we all getting older. The time is not going to wait for us. Matter of fact, God created time for us to manage it not for time to manage us. So when we say there is not enough hours in the day, that's not transformational thinking because if God put 24 hours in the day and seven days in the week and 365 days in the year, then that means he's given us the time to do what we need to do. We just got to steward it properly. So that means a transformational mind, he has planned. He has purpose, as I said last week, Without a vision, the people perish, so they cast off restraints. When you have transformational thinking, when you're narrow-minded, when you're thinking on the things of God, you don't find time for foolishness. You don't have you don't find time for gossip. You don't find time for things that are not in line with what God wants me to do because I don't have time to waste. And this particular opportunity, I may not get it back again. So it's important that I move. So we got to understand transformational thinking and moving into things of God, coming out of that religious way of thinking. And I guess we all got it in some form or fashion. But the thing is to recognize it. And one of the things that's going to transform our mind is the word of God. You have to get it in your spirit. God does not speak to our minds. He speaks to our spirit. When we got saved, our spirit 
was raised from the dead. So our relationship with God is spirit to spirit. And then we renew our minds by washing it with the water of the word. It literally takes away all of those old thoughts and those old thinking pattern and those old way of doing things. And we've actually put on the mind of Christ. And Ephesians is talk about the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation. Salvation is not just about, as I said before, you waiting to die to go to heaven. It's about wholeness. It's about freedom in Christ. It's about getting healed. It's about being delivered. It's about being made whole and not for the purpose of just doing it, but so I can become like Christ in the earth. That's what transformational thinking is. That's what God wants us to have. That's what he wants us to do. So I'm just excited in this particular time and age. Um, I know it's different, but if you read in the book of Acts, when it seemed like all hell had broke loose, that's when the church flourished. That's when the church was at its best. It wouldn't be no need for a transformational thinking and a renewed mind and to operate in faith if we didn't have opposition. Opposition is going to come from now until we are called home until Jesus comes back. We just got to get prepared for divine wisdom, divine strategy. We got to put new weaponry in our, in our tool belt and our spiritual tool belt, because if we're going to move to new levels and move from faith to faith and glory to glory and higher heights in the things of God, as, as Joseph said, I can't bring old way of thinking into the new. I can't bring old wineskins into new wineskins unless they're bust, they can't handle it. So we have to, transformational thinking gives us the ability to, to sustain on this level. Because you're going to come under attack. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be lied on. You're going to be stabbed in the back. But do you have the capacity inside of you to withstand it? Can you not clap back at everything like Jesus did when they was accusing him before he's about to go to the cross? He said he never said a, he never said a mumbling word. Because I understand what y'all doing. I understand my calling and my purpose. So I'm not moved by what you say. Because God also says when you're persecuted. When you come under attack, don't speak. And there'll become a time when I'll tell you to speak and I'll give you the words and the wisdom to speak. And because of that, they'll not be your words, they'll be mine. And no adversary shall be able to stand against what you're saying. So we don't need to clap back at everything. If you're doing that, then you're not ready for next. You're not transforming your mind into the image and the likeness of God. Because as I said, they're coming. Challenges are coming. Obstacles are coming. Circumstances are coming. People are going to come against you. Family going to come against you. Everything's going to come against you. But I have peace and joy in my heart because I understand that God is with me no matter what. And in doing so, God will put people in your life. We talked about teams in the beginning. You need a team who has transformational thinking. You need people who walk in faith and walk in boldness and walk in power in the midst of corona in the mix of when it seems like things ain't going right in your life you need those type of people now you don't want to become dependent on them we want to depend on god but god will put people in your life so we can get equipped so we can be full so we lack nothing when we go out and do the things that god has called us to do we we keep saying no weapon formed against us shall prosper but we still complaining we keep saying no weapon formed against us to prosper, but we keep begging God. You are son and daughter of the most high God. You don't have to beg and plead. All you have to do is walk in the fullness of what God has called you to do. And that comes by way of transforming our minds every single day. Getting rid of the old man and replacing those thoughts with this newness of life. And that's something to be excited about. That's something to uh, have joy about. That God himself, the creator of the universe, the creator of all things, chose me and he chose you to fulfill his purpose in the earth. So I pray this week, uh, that's my time. You can bring Joseph back on. Um, that you delve into the things of God that your mind be transformed, that you, you, you take on the mindset that I'm choosing, I'm making up in my mind that my mind is going to be changed.
that I want the things of God, that I need the things of God, because my life is at stake. Destiny is at stake. Other people are depending on you. There's some generational curses that, that are going to be broken off your family bloodline when your mind is transformed. Not only are they going to be broken, but he's going to give you the ability to go back and get some generational blessings that was lost for some other people who died with it inside of them. That's what happens when our mind is transformed into the image and to the likeness of God. To become like Christ in the earth. That's the purpose. That's the goal. That's what we're here for. So Joseph is going to bring, take us out and worship um, and praise. Um, I just pray right now that whatever thoughts you're having that are contrary to the will of God, the Bible says that the word is like a hammer ready to crush the rock, that the hard, whatever stony things you have going on in your heart, that you allow the, the word of God to come in and, and soften those things. I encourage you to cry when you need to cry. That doesn't mean you're not operating in faith. But at the same time, we need to continue to move. I, I encourage you to hurt because it's, it's in your humanness to hurt. But it's also in God's divinity for you to heal. So we want to get healed. We want to be made whole. The time is running out, man. We got things to do. We need to be about our father's business. And God wants you whole. And you're going to be made whole by transformational thinking. And I'm talking about transformational thinking that's in line with kingdom purpose and kingdom plan and what God wants. The Bible says he'll give us the will to do, but we're going to have to choose to do. But it's for his good pleasure, not ours. So I thank you all for tuning in. I speak blessings over your life, healing and prosperity over your life. Uh, that you just embrace the things of God. Not to understand anything God is doing because you're not going to. He's infinite. You know, you and I both, we have been known to sabotage some things in our life. So if God showed us everything in our flesh, we would find a way to mess it up. Enjoy your relationship with God. Enjoy your relationship with yourself, with your family, with your loved ones. Enjoy this relationship called life. Life in superabundance right now here on the earth, not when we die. Learn to laugh. Learn to enjoy what God has given us. So I pray that this week um, your seek for God will increase. That you'll acknowledge him for who he is in your life and that you put on the mind of Christ every single day. A continuous process. If you slip, if you fall, get back up. Keep it moving. If you need to talk to some people, talk to some people who have been through what you've been through and who are moving and what you've been through. You need not to seek social media for advice. Some of them people don't even like you. Seriously, some of them people want you to fail. We don't need to put everything out on social media. Some things are just between you and God. If you say it's about your personal relationship with him, then you need to make it personal. But it's more than just personal. Because in order for us to advance the kingdom, we got to go out in the world and make disciples and draw people in. And if we're not whole, if we're not mentally healthy, if we're not soundness of mind, it's going to be difficult or virtually impossible for you to do that. So I bless y'all. Uh, thank God for you all. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, just as our pastor say, just fall in love with God. Just grow in love with God. And everything else will take care of itself. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. That's a promise. When you have a hunger and a thirst for the things of God, he's going to fill you with more of who he is. Posture your heart right. Get your mind right. So I'm done. I thank y'all. I bless y'all. Take us out, Joseph. Really crush me. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. In the crushing. 
In the pressing, you are making the wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking the ground. So make me a vessel. Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making the wine. In the soil, I will now surrender. You are breaking the ground. You are breaking the ground. So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring the light out of me. Jesus, bring the light out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. And the kingdom is here. I lay down my own flames to carry your new fire today. Where, where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. And so I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Say I yield to you and to your careful hand. And I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make us whatever you want us to be. So we came here with nothing, but all you have given us, Jesus, bring the wine out of us. Jesus, bring the wine out of us. Oh, Jesus, bring new wine out of us. Jesus, bring new wine out of us.